Are you a business owner? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you gauge the success of your business purely in monetary terms? How much money is in your bank account? How much profit you're making? And how much money it generates for you and your investors? If the answer is yes, then that's a very dangerous approach to adopt in your business. It's doomed for failure, it's a very narrow perspective, and it's a very old fashioned way to conduct how you run your business. In this video, I'm going to outline why you should take a more balanced approach, what a balanced approach actually means, and the key elements that go into having a more balanced performance system. Hi folks, welcome to I Hate Numbers, the channel that's there to improve your financial awareness, improve the battle that goes on between your ears, and help you and your business make more profit, save tax and save time. My name is Mahmood, I'm an accountant, educator and mentor, and proud author of the book, I Hate Numbers. Let's crack on with the video. One of the dangers of having a very narrow view on your business performance by looking at purely at financial outcomes is you're missing out the key ingredients, the key elements that help the financial performance be sustainable and to prosper and to grow. Back in the early 80s, a device, a performance management and measurement device called the Balance Scorecard came into being. In the Balance Scorecard, which has been adapted for use in the social enterprise, for use in the not-for-profit sector, for use by charities, and as well as by private uh, organisations, it is a universally great first-generation performance management and measurement tool. If we purely look at financial outcomes, if we purely look at financial performance, we ignore the impact on having good positive relationships with customers, delivering what our customers expect of us, delivering their why. If we ignore the internal workings of our organisation, the processes that we have to go through to deliver those services, to deliver those products to our clients, then we're missing a trick. If we ignore the impact on employees, the impact of innovation, then again, that's a very narrow, lopsided view. All these things have to come together to contribute to delivering financial outcomes. Financial outcomes comes as a result of taking a more balanced view, a more balanced perspective of managing and growing your business. What are those four perspectives or four quadrants? So if we visualise this idea, we look at our business, the conventional model goes to something like We look at the customer perspective. Now, we have to understand who our customers are, what segments we're delivering to, and we need to ask ourselves that question. What is it our customers require of us? What's really critical that we have to deliver to them if we're actually to meet their requirements, to meet their demands, and they come back for more, buy more things of us. So once we've understood that, then what we can do, we can then develop the next part of the scorecard. Let's have a look at the other three quadrants. The other quadrant is called uh, innovation and learning, and that is where we look at our employees and the innovation that we have in our products and services. It's really important to have not only good competent staff here, but we need to consider our staff team as a real primary asset in our, our organisation. We need to look after them, we need to retain good quality staff, we need to develop them, we need to have them on board because without that capacity, we can't do anything. Think of the consequences if staff left you, what would you be able to do then? It's important for companies and businesses to innovate, to bring new things to our customers, to our marketplace. If we don't, and we rely exactly on what we're doing now, eventually time will catch up with us and we're gonna find it very difficult to sustain. The other two quadrants are looking in terms of processes. Now, products just don't deliver by themselves. Services don't deliver in isolation. We need to have good processes from onboarding, from manufacturing, if we're making things, for how we store things, and how we deliver things to our end customer, and how we deal with our supply chain. Lastly, financial outcomes. We're not ignoring financial outcomes. What we're saying is we can't look at those in isolation. And financial outcomes could be, it's really critical to look at things like money in the bank, to look at profitability. We have to look at things like growth. Now, what goes into those scorecards here Critically, it's driven by what is your underlying idea about what your Northern Star looks like, what's your plan of attack, what's your strategy, and whatever's in that, then that will determine what goes into each of those quadrants. Having decided what those four quadrants are made up of, we then consider four elements that make up the figures, the items that go into each of those quadrants. By the way, folks, if you check out the show notes, there's some link to some additional resources here where you can do some reading, 
with a cup of coffee, maybe a glass of something stronger, let's crack on with where we are. Critical success factors. So if we look at each of these areas of our business, there has to be something that we've got to get right. So when we look at the customers, customers may value from us, the segment we're dealing with, is the quality of what we're providing to them. Quality is going to be a really important uh, area that we've got to do well in. When it comes to things like processes, on time, efficiency, onboarding is going to be really smooth. Maybe that's what our clients also value. All these quadrants, by the way, are interlinked. You can't look at them in isolation. Having them identified what is critical, what our critical success factors are, then what we need to do next is to decide what the measures should be that we should adopt. And it's key here with a balanced scorecard is that we should aim for no more than maybe two, maybe three at top level of a measure or a KPI in each of those. If we have too many, our attention is going to be diluted and it's going to be very difficult to focus on what is critical. A measure of quality, and quality is a very difficult thing to measure anyhow, we're going to measure things like aspects of quality. So we measure, measure that in terms of the level of returns we get back from our clients. We may measure that in terms of complaints. We may measure that in terms of retention, if we manage to retain customers and we manage to sell more to them, then that could indicate we're offering a quality experience, a quality product, we are delivering quality. If we look at financial outcomes, if liquidity, money in the bank is considered critical, and it normally is, then a key measure for that may be looking at cash balances, maybe looking in terms of how long it takes to collect money from customers, having determined what those quadrants are, what's critical, having determined what those KPIs, those measures, those metrics should be, we then need to think about what do we set as targets. Now, those targets may be one, two years ahead, but we've got to set ourselves some targets, and targets ideally should be stretching, neither too soft, not too impossible, so it becomes difficult to achieve them, but something that stretches us and takes us outside of our comfort zone. And the last thing to consider is how do we actually do this? What are the plans, what are the initiatives that we have to put in place in order to achieve those targets, in order to hit those KPIs, in order to bring success to ourselves and our business. So let's just wrap up. So folks, let's just wrap up where we are. So when you look at measuring, managing and improving performance in your business, take a more balanced approach. A model like a balanced scorecard is a great way of looking at that. What it says is you have particularly four goggles, for perspectives that you look at your business in, typically customers, processes, innovation and learning, and the financial perspective. Think about what's critical, what's the critical success factors, i.e. what is it you've got to do really well at in order to maintain and prosper and grow? What should be the measures? What should be the KPIs within each of those quadrants? And lastly, how are you going to achieve them? Folks, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, I'd love it if you give, some, give it some love, give it some feedback. Remember to subscribe and share it with those who you feel will get some benefit from. Until we meet again next week, folks, have a look at your own business and take that balanced view in what's important for you.